Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. And today on The Roads with Bo, we will be doing another episode of The Roads Not Taken, which is a weekly series where we go through the previous week's events and we talk about news that was unreported or underreported or it was reported on, but it needs to be uh, repeated because it's context for events that are going to occur in the coming week. Um, And then at the end of it, we go through and I answer a few questions from y'all. If you're interested in sending a question, the uh, email address is questionforbo at gmail, and that's for F-O-R. Okay, so starting off with foreign policy. Acapulco was hit by Hurricane Otis, a Category 5 hurricane. It caused a massive amount of damage and disruption. Aid is desperately needed, but because of other events in the world, it is being overshadowed. The toll is currently at 38. It is expected to rise. Um, One thing to note about this is that Otis was another hurricane that grew just enormously in strength right before it came ashore. It's at the point where we just need to start anticipating that with with hurricanes. Um, You can't go off of the numbers the way that we used to. Climate change is real and it's here. Uh, The Commerce Department, U.S. Commerce Department, has banned exports of most U.S.-made firearms temporarily out of fear that they might undermine U.S. foreign policy interests. They're they're worried about them falling into, quote, the wrong hands. The rule applies to new export licenses, and it exempts the countries that you would expect. This doesn't apply to Ukraine or Israel or probably three dozen, more or less, uh, other countries that have entered into arms control agreements. Um, So submissions that companies are turning in now, they're basically just going into an inbox where they'll wait. The expectation is that this is going to be done for 90 days. If this is being done for the reason that seems very, very apparent. I think 90 days is incredibly optimistic. Um, Okay. Israel is saying it has entered the second stage of the war, which is expected to include a large-scale ground offensive. U.S. officials have said, quote, Make no mistake, what is, has, or will unfold in Gaza is purely an Israeli decision. It seems pretty clear that the Israeli government did not take the advice that the advisors uh, presented. That seems painfully evident at this point. Um... I know that even after we talked about it on the other channel, there were still people that were like, no, they're going there to advise and tell them how to do this invasion, and and they're going to be there to supervise and all of that stuff. It is worth noting that my understanding is they're already on their way home. It, It certainly seems as though they went over there, they made their pitch, and they were politely told Israeli forces are already committed to a course of action. Have a nice day. That certainly seems to be what occurred. Okay, Elon Musk says his company will provide internet service to internationally recognized relief organizations in Gaza. Um, That's good, because while right now, at this exact moment, the phones and internet are back up, we have no idea how long that's going to last. Um, there are military reasons for cutting communications to an area. It is generally considered best practices to avoid doing that for extended periods because while, yes, it disrupts your opposition's communications, it also disrupts 
the ability to call for an ambulance. Um, so there's there's that. Uh, negotiations that are being facilitated by Qatar, Qatar uh, for most Americans, between Israel and Palestinian groups are continuing, but there is no indication of how they're going. The one bit of good news that we have in this bunch, the Saudi defense minister will be visiting the White House to discuss ways to avoid this becoming a, a regional issue. Um, basically trying to figure out how to stop the conflict from expanding. The reason this is good news, A, Saudi Arabia, they have a whole lot of pull in the region. They have a whole lot of influence. So them apparently understanding the situation, that's good. The fact that they're sending their defense minister, not some envoy, not some assistant, but the defense minister. That's a really good sign because normally that buffer person, the the negotiator, the envoy, whatever, their real job is to talk about it, present their country's case, and then be like, oh, I love what you're saying, but I have to talk to my boss. They're sending the defense minister. Um, That's a really good sign. It indicates they understand how sideways this can go. Um, And on that note, Palestinian forces have openly called for assistance from outside actors. If you have, if you watched the video on this channel, the very last one, uh, the one that came out just before this one, they're calling their allies. Um, So far, nobody's picking up the phone. Um, The calls are going unanswered for the most part. There's some light stuff, but nothing major. But each one of these calls carries the risk of it expanding. And to clarify, again, this can expand, uh, I think, to a a degree more than most Americans want to admit. Um, This could get real bad. And this is coming from the, the same guy who, throughout the conflict in Ukraine, you know, every other week there there was a news story. This is how it's going to expand. And the next day there'd be a video from me. No, it's not. And this is why. This one can expand. Um, and that is, that that's the top priority. Honestly, if, if this, if we get out of this, Without it turning into a regional conflict, it will be a, because a whole lot of people put in a whole lot of work and they got really lucky. Okay, switching conflicts. In Crimea, old Oleg, uh, it looks like he took a round. So there's nothing known about his condition but this, uh, he was once viewed as the most likely, I do not have a nice word for this, the most likely candidate that Putin would install. Um, and and he, he has been hit. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of reporting. And it's basically Russia is said to be shooting, retreating troops, or those who are disobeying orders. Um, Looking through the claims, yes, it has occurred. I don't know that it's quite a pattern large enough to say that it's policy yet. It's happened, and it's happened more than once. But it could be a chain of pretty isolated incidents at this moment, based on what I've been able to to actually visually confirm. Um, so this is one of those moments where you're kind of seeing the ideal propaganda win. What's being said, it's true, it happened. 
the framing of it as in these are orders that came from Moscow, I can't confirm that. Okay, in related news, Russia is engaging in an attempt to turn the tide and make some territorial gains. Uh, it's not not really going well for them. They've been unsuccessful for the most part. And the reported losses are being measured at the brigade level. That's a number in thousands. Uh, Russian brigade structure is variable. At minimum 2,000 up to 8,000, and we are talking about these losses in a very short period of time. Okay, on to U.S. news. Mike Pence announced the suspension of his presidential campaign. Um, The United Auto Workers are winning their fight. General Motors is now the only company that hasn't kind of come around, uh, and the strike against GM is expanding. Santos entered a not guilty plea on his newest charges. The trial is set for September. Biden has an executive order coming out about AI. Uh, I haven't read the whole draft yet. It's more than 100 pages. But a scan of it, it really looks like it's gearing up for legislation that they assume is coming. It looks like more like they're setting up offices to monitor and assess risks. Um, And that makes sense because the executive branch can't really just start regulating without authorization from Congress. But it looks like, my guess is the Biden administration got tired of waiting for Republicans to get their act together in the House and put this together to kind of be ready when the inevitable legislation comes. Trump believes Pence should publicly endorse him since he dropped out of the race. Uh, Because I had a great successful presidency and he was the vice president, he should endorse me. I chose him, made him vice president, but... People in politics can be very disloyal. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like this quote. Uh, you know, reading this and, and having a memory that, you know, go, goes back to 2019, this is, this is wild. Um, you, you put this in the context of January 6th, and that, that is just such a, a very bizarre statement. Okay, moving on to cultural news. Matthew Perry was found dead. That's the uh, that's the guy from Friends, if you don't know. Uh, right-wing commentators almost immediately started a conspiracy theory that it was because the, he was vaccinated. It's being described in reporting and by local authorities as an apparent drowning. In environmental news, something that you might not expect to be in environmental news, OpenAI has launched a new team of employees, and it's discussed in their blog. They have put together a preparedness team to assess risks, uh, and talk and kind of look into the, the dangers that AI poses to avoid catastrophic issues like nuclear annihilation. I'm not joking. Seaburn is actually mentioned in their blog. So there's that. I, I really hope that uh, this new team of employees does not let their employer down. Okay, moving on to odd news. Right-wing commentators are currently upset that a drag artist hit number one on the Christian music charts. 
this becomes even more interesting or entertaining when you learn that it was months ago, that this happened months ago. But apparently, many people who are very vested in the Christian music scene went months without noticing that Flamey Grant was topping the music scene, pun intended. Um, Flamey Grant is, is, yes, that's a reference to Amy Grant. Um, it, it seems like if this was something you were interested in, you, you might notice before now. I mean, the name Flamey Grant really isn't... Uh, I mean, that's not really hiding a whole lot, just saying. Uh, in other odd news, <clears throat> Australia has apparently decided to rid a park of wild horses, or at least reduce their number, by shooting them from the air. May you have as much luck as you did with your war on emus. For Americans, just Google Emu War. Okay, moving on to the questions. What's the difference between MAGA, Ultra MAGA, and Christian nationalism? <laughs> See, I have a very snarky response to this, but I don't know if this person wants a real answer or not. So Christian nationalism exists independently of MAGA. Um, but so not all Christian nationalists are MAGA. All MAGA accept Christian nationalist talking points. Um, Ultra MAGA is just the development of what happens in an authoritarian culture where you have to become more and more pure. And, and that's just the natural outgrowth of that. They're all very much interlocked. Um, if, if I was to give them uniforms, I would say that MAGA had brown clothing, Ultra MAGA had gray, and... Uh, Christian nationalism had black. A let's see, what does this say? This isn't good. A bunch of people have asked what the U.S. gets out of the relationship with Israel. Foreign policy question. Okay, well, it's all about power, right? See, this is one of those moments where it gets uncomfortable. In the Middle East, most countries in the Middle East, especially when this relationship started, they didn't like the U.S. Having a country that is allied with you in the middle of a bunch of countries that doesn't like you it's kind of like having a lightning rod. That's that's what the U.S. gets out of it. Sure, there's intel intelligent sharing and, and stuff like that, but that's about it. It's not like the U.S. uses Israel to launch from because, like when you're talking about major operations, because of the, the regional view of Israel, that just makes it worse. So it really, the United States, from a foreign policy perspective, gets a country in the region that absorbs most of the anger. That's, that's the, the main benefit to the U.S. Um, again, it's all very cynical. You seem to be very sympathetic to the Palestinians, and I feel for them, but you have to admit that they could have avoided this 
by throwing Hamas out. So in this case, they're obviously talking about the civilians because they would be throwing out the, the, the militant force. Um, let's just see how easy it is for one of the most advanced militaries on the planet to do it. Let, let's start with that. And then we'll talk about whether or not a whole bunch of people with no assistance, because they, they wouldn't get any, no, nobody would help them. Like as far as with, with military aid, nobody would assist them. With no money, barely making it as it is, if they would be able to just simply throw them out. Um, yeah, let, let, let's see how one of the most advanced militaries in the world handles it first. The guy in Maine used a different kind of rifle. And there's some descriptions here of, of the scene. Um, apparently it's a higher powered, it's a higher powered than normal AR. Is that the one you warned us about in those videos? Uh, unfortunately, no. No, it's not. Um, so the normal AR is 223. The one that the guy in Maine used was 308. So that is, it brings it into a new category. And I, this is something I've talked about for years. The AR, the normal AR, is not a high powered rifle. It doesn't matter how many times CNN says that it is, it's not. It's low intermediate. Uh, a 308 is a, that's a full powered charge. Um, that, that's, that is a full, that's a full power round there. Um, and so much so that it takes it out of the normal category. This, and just to avoid the, the, the debates that, that will undoubtedly arise if terminology is wrong, um, th this is a battle rifle. Okay, so, and, and you can define that as a full-powered round in a semi-automatic rifle that has a detachable magazine that holds 10 to 20 rounds. That's a battle rifle. Um, and that, that's what he had in, in an AR platform. Um, using that terminology will avoid the whole deflection of, I don't know what an assault weapon is. Um, but no, it's not the same. This is more powerful than the normal AR. It is not as powerful as the new rifle that the army will be getting. And because of the way gun culture is, a whole bunch of people are going to want that new rifle. Um, so, sadly, no, it, it isn't. It's, it's, it's more powerful, but it's not, not the same. Not the same one. Okay. All right, and that is all of the questions. Uh, okay. Wow, so much for ending that on a light note, which is what we're supposed to be doing now. <laughs> um, recently, somebody said that I needed to tell a ranch story in every one of these. And I, I don't know that this is exactly a ranch story, but it's something that's kind of entertaining. 
you know, I put a lot of Easter eggs, you know, behind me on the shelves, little, just little items to reference other things. And a lot of them are, they're props, for lack of a better word, from, from horror movies. Because, I mean, frankly, it's, it's fitting for what I talk about most of the time. I, uh, I planned on ordering the little statue from The Exorcist. And my wife, who is not a superstitious person in any way, shape, or form, uh, she she basically acted like a, a Kansas mom, and I was trying to bring a Ouija board into the house or something. Uh, she was basically like, no, you do not order that. Do not bring that thing here. <laughs> I found out that apparently when she was younger, that, that movie did a number on her, and she still hasn't recovered. Um but so we will uh we'll end on that instead so i hope this provides a little bit more information a little bit more context and having the right information will make all the difference y'all have a good night